Hello, we meet again on Chapter 9, Form 4, KSSM, Human Digestive System. The content standard for today's lesson is 9.4, Assimilation. The learning standard 9.4.1 describes the roles of the circulatory system in the assimilation of digested food. 9.4.2 discuss the functions of liver in the assimilation of digested food in the metabolism digested food that are carbohydrate and proteins, storage of nutrients, and detoxification. In the assimilation process that occurs in the cell, nutrients that have been digested are used to form complex compounds or structures of components in the cell. So the human circulatory system, which consists of blood circulatory system and the lymphatic system, helps to transport these nutrients to the cell to be assimilated. Now, we look at the process that occurs in the blood capillary and also lacteal after the absorption of food in the small intestine. So, in the blood capillaries, the blood capillaries will combine to form hepatic portal vein. So, all these blood capillaries combine to form hepatic portal vein. So, this hepatic portal vein will transport the blood with, which consists of sugar, that is glucose, and amino acid to the liver. Whereas lacteal, that transport droplet of lipid, will form a bigger vessel that is part of the lymphatic system. So this lymphatic vessel will then enter the thoracic duct that later flow into left subclavian vein. So this left subclavian vein is part of blood circulatory system. So at the end, the content in the lymphatic vessel that is lipid will combine with the blood circulatory system. In other words, the lymphatic system will merge into the uh, blood circulatory system. What are the functions of liver in the assimilation process? The first one is the metabolism of the digested food. Glucose, as you know, is used in cellular respiration. It is oxidized to produce energy. Whereas amino acids are used for synthesizing plasma protein and enzyme. Through the deamination process in the liver, excess amino acid are turned into urea, and this urea will later be excreted through the urine. Next function of the liver is detoxification. Liver cells are able to expel toxic substances from the blood, such as drugs, alcohol, and other foreign substances. And these toxic substances are then expelled again through the urine. And the third function of the liver in assimilation is the storage of nutrients. The excess glucose in the liver is converted to glycogen to be stored in the liver. Liver also provide a place to store vitamins and mineral salts. Now we are going to see the assimilation process that occurs in the liver. The first one we are going to look into amino acid. Amino acid is used to synthesize plasma protein and enzyme. Excess amino acid cannot be stored in the body. Hence, the excess of amino acid are broken down through the process of deamination. So, through the process of deamination, the excess amino acid will form urea, which later being expelled through the urine. And when the glucose supply is insufficient, 
the liver is able to convert amino acid into glucose. Next, okay, the assimilation of glucose in the liver. So, glucose is used for cellular respiration to generate energy. And if the glucose is in excess, the excess glucose is converted to glycogen and this glycogen will be stored in the liver. When the glucose level in the blood decrease or going low, then the glycogen is converted back to glucose because our body needs energy through cellular respiration. However, if the glycogen supply reaches to a maximum level, then the excess glucose is converted to fat. Now we look at the assimilation process in the cell. For the amino acid, amino acid are used to synthesize new protoplasm in a cell and amino acid is also used in repairing the damaged tissues. Amino acid are also used to synthesize hormone and enzyme. Next is glucose. Glucose is oxidized through cellular respiration to release energy water and carbon dioxide. Excess glucose is kept as glycogen in a muscle. Energy is used for the process such as protein synthesis. This energy comes from the cellular respiration which the substrate needed is glucose. The next one assimilation of lipid. Lipids such as phospholipid and cholesterol are actually the primary component that build up the plasma membrane. Fat is also oxidized to release energy when there is insufficient glucose. Excess fat are kept in the adipose tissue that we can find underneath the skin. Now, we recap what we have learned. From the small intestine, the nutrients that have been absorbed, that are glucose and amino acid, they are, they are absorbed through blood capillary. And this blood capillary will combine to form hepatic portal vein. The hepatic portal vein will transport glucose and amino acid to the liver. Whereas lipid will flow through the lacteal, that is part of the lymphatic system. In the liver, the excess glucose will be stored as glycogen, whereas the excess amino acid will undergo the process of deamination to produce urea, where the urea will be excreted out by the kidney through the urine. The glucose is then used by the cell to generate energy to cellular respiration whereas amino acid is used by the cell to synthesize plasma protein and enzyme lipid is used by the cell to synthesize protoplasm in the cell and also to synthesize plasma membrane that's all for today's lesson. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.